again, everybody. Welcome back to the Celtic Forever YouTube channel. We've got quite a few things to get through because we didn't do a post-match after the, the Falkirk game, did we, John? So we're going to touch on the Falkirk game because we've not had a wee say on things. Let's say hello to John. How are you, John? Hello. How are you? Hi. Okay. It's good to be back. It's been a few days since we've been on. Uh, the Falkirk game, we will obviously touch on that, but there's a whole lot of other stuff to get through, John. We've got news, rumours. Gossip, Celtic ladies, all sorts of things to go through. Uh, but quickly, I want to mention the competition first. The competition this week, well, sorry, last week, first of all, there was no winner. Nobody got the correct score, 5-2 to Celtic against Falkirk. Um, so, no, there was no winner. So, it's a rollover this week, and it's the same prize then. It's a still game. Uh, wall, plaque, metal wall, plaque up for grabs, folks. So, the competition this week is just the same, same as usual. Correct score for the St. Johnson game at the weekend. For looking for the correct score. And any player to score in the game at any time. So we're looking for the correct score and any player to score in the game at any time. It's a wee bit easy before, so we'll try to make it a wee bit more difficult, John. Um, uh, no winner the last time, no surprises there. Uh, I don't think anybody expected a 5 2 result. That was, I wasn't expecting anything like, like that myself, but there you go. Yeah, I think there was a couple of 4-2s, so I'm lucky to uh, end it, it said 4-2, but no, 5-2 was, was um, one of the FIFA scores, wasn't it, when you're playing FIFA, um, or Championship Manager or whatever, um, but uh, uh, Falkirk, they gave us a really good game, but we're going to get to that, folks, right, we will get to that, I promise, in the next 15 minutes or so, let's run through some of the news stories round about Celtic Park and things that affect Celtic, some stories that don't affect Celtic as well, we'll start with Lewis Palmer, Rumours or news come breaking today that it's the chance he could be leaving in January, John. I don't think there's any surprise there. Uh, since he missed his penalty for Honduras, he's not been the same player. But there is rumours, John, that he could be leaving in January, Palmer. What do you think of that? He's had his chance, really, I, I think, Lewis Palmer. So it, it is no real surprise if he leaves in January because every time he's played, he's uh, he played OK in the pre-season friendlies, I think. But any competitive stuff... He's just no showed up. It's I think it's time for a, a maybe a wee loan move for Lewis Palmer. Don't know. I don't know if it's a permanent deal Celtic might be considering. But personally, I know he's a boy with bags of ability. But I I think maybe a loan move would do him. It seems to be a similar pattern from what Hatskabanovic had at Celtic John there because he came in, had a few brilliant games, then just fell away, non-performer if you like. In the end for Hatsubanovich, I'm not saying Palmer's the same, but he's gone down that road, didn't he? So as you say, I think maybe a, a wee loan spell would maybe do Palmer the world a good. Aye, exactly. Keep him in Scotland, keep an eye on him, loan him out to somebody like Aberdeen, maybe something like that. He is a player with loads of ability, we know that. He's just, uh, for some reason, right now he's failing to deliver, and he has failed to deliver since that penalty miss. Yeah. And I understand there's a lot of Celtic fans out there that, that do like Palmer, and, and we like him as well. It's just any, any time he's had his chance, he's not really took it. You know, I know I've got Maida on, on the park and who's flying every time he plays plays for Celtic, but at any time Palmer's came in, he's not really done it. But it's, it's hard to shift Maida out of the team, John. Well, uh, he's the benchmark. I think Lewis Palmer probably has got a better cross on him than what Dyson's got but that's where uh, that's where it ends I think Dyson's basically if he could cross the ball better he's a 40 million quid player his closing down his goal scoring he's chasing back uh, he's second to none uh, very hard for any player at Celtic to push him out of the team I think yeah that's it John yeah it's very difficult for Palmer he was up against it for the start wasn't he? so you know January's not here yet so Still got a bit of time to break into the team, still got a chance to to prove uh, that he's the player that we all know that he can be, John. So, okay, we'll leave that there. Let's move on. Scott Brown, John, I think I mentioned in jest straight after, um, straight after Craig Levine got the sack, I said to you, What about Scott Brown potentially for the job for St Johnston? He's now the front runner for the St Johnston job. He's he's uh, Bookie's favourite for the St Johnston post, Scott Brown. Scott Brown himself is interested in becoming the manager of St Johnston. Um, I'd, I'd be quite happy to see Scott Brown in charge of St Johnston, John, another Celtic 
sort of minded manager, if you like. There's no too many in the SPL, but he'd be one there at St Johnston. It's, it's no the sort of other the team maybe he'd be looking for, but yeah, it's a good start from John if he gets the job at St Johnston. I well, St Johnston are this sort of problem club, and they're always just lucky to stay in the, the Premier League. They always just struggle and no more to get by. Uh, I don't know if Scott Brown would get any better than any other manager at that club, St Johnson. Because they've always, as far back as I can remember, they've always been either in the relegation fight, struggling. I think it'd take a, a better manager than Scott Brown to get the best out of St Johnson, Sander. I'm not sure, but I'd love to see him there right enough because, like you say, it's another Celtic minded manager in the league and that's what we want but let's say this Naismith stuff we want that kind of stuff eradicated uh, but I I suppose I would welcome Scott Brown at St Johnston I, I would I would welcome it but it's a problem club to me Xander always has been yeah John sorry you broke up a wee bit there but I got the gist of what you were saying the, but he's a favourite anyway he's a favourite so that's what the bookies are saying We'll find it in the next few days, John. So potentially could be the manager up against Celtic at the weekend. Yeah, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. Uh, but I, I would welcome it anyway, uh, just because it's Scott Brown. I'd like to see him in the Premier League. The more Celtic-minded managers, the better. I'm not saying he would do Celtic any favours, but he would have his team trying against Rangers, and that's what I want. Yeah, the, the second favourite for that job is ex-Rangers player Ian Murray, John. So. <laughs> there's your choices, Scott Brown or Ian Murray, ex Ranger. So, um, but watch your space with that one because that's going to unravel quite quickly. I think. I think. I think St Johnston will have a, a manager in place before the weekend. So we'll, we'll keep we'll keep an eye on that, John. And you mentioned Naismith a minute ago there. Let's let's have a wee word on Naismith getting the sack. We did say it was going to happen, John, didn't we? We did, we did see it. Um, it just took a bit longer than expected. I think that was nine defeats in a row before he got the sack. So. You, Naismith, he got a great chance, a great run at Hearts there, didn't he? Before he actually got the bullet. Um, and I'm also hearing snippets of rumours, etc., that Neil Lennon could be in contention for that one at Hearts, John, after everything that's happened. From being at Hibs, being at Celtic, you know, getting attacked on the touchline. Lennon says it wouldn't phase him. So, uh, what do you think of that, John? Neil Lennon at Hearts, uh, I would welcome it. I would definitely welcome it. Again, another guy that's going to have his team fighting against every single team in the league. I mean, he was at Hibs. We had his team fighting against Celtic. So, I he's a professional guy. He's he's wanting the best for his team, no matter who it is. So, I, I would welcome that. And Stephen Naismith, by the way, I predicted the exact game that he would be sacked weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was. It was the Mirren game, wasn't it? Two, one defeat. To St Mirren at the weekend there, and it was sacked 24 hours later. So yeah, good prediction, John. You did say it a wee while ago, and, it, and it's came to fruition that that was a game he got the sack. So John, I, I, he should have been out there earlier. Should have been out there before the Celtic game, but the board gave him chance after chance after chance. He's just not got it as a manager, has he? So uh, yeah, we we'll keep an eye on that one as well. I don't think it will personally happen to be honest with you, but um, there's quite a lot happening in the SPL just now, isn't there, Scott Brown? Neil Lennon both been linked to jobs in the SPL. Um, all right, John, let's move on then. Uh, Boyata frozen out at Club Bruges. Obviously, we play Club Bruges very soon in the Champions League. But big Boyata, he's frozen out there, John, 33 year old centre back. Uh, I was quite looking forward to seeing big Boyata against Celtic, to be honest with you, but he's frozen out. Obviously, there's a lot of trouble at Club Bruges. I've just sacked a manager, etc. But um, 33 year old, big centre half. John, looking for a new club, would you welcome him back at Celtic, 33-year-old? Uh, possibly, aye, possibly, uh, as a, a bench warmer, if nothing else. Mm, yeah, well, we're going we're gonna to touch on the defenders that played against Falkirk, John. I think he would, he would uh, thrive in that sort of, you know, circumstance, if you like. Uh, we play Club Rouge in November, but the big man won't be there. I was looking, sort of looking forward to that. Um, as I say, we'll get to the Falkirk game very soon. Let's quickly round up uh, the rest of the, the gossip news and rumours, etc. Aberdeen in the League Cup semi-final, John, that was always going to happen. We were always going to get the toughest round. That was always going to be the case. So that is what's happened. We've got Aberdeen. They've got Motherwell. Um, 
Aberdeen quietly going through their business, aren't they? So um, that's that's one to look forward to in the second of November. Aye, I would rather have get Rangers in in the next round, to be honest with you, rather than Aberdeen. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, we don't know. I mean, I've not really saw much of Aberdeen, but as I say, they're quietly going through their business, aren't they? That's in the background, sitting top of the league with Celtic into the semi final with the cup, you know, and they're just they're just doing what they've got to do, and uh, I think we'll be the first ones to play them. So uh, it'll be very interesting, and it's a game I'm really looking forward to, John. Semi final at Hamden. Absolutely, aye. That'll be a cracking game. I've watched Aberdeen quite a few times this season. They're a half decent team. They lost their way a wee bit after Mayofsky left, and now they've found form again. That manager's uh, he's got them playing really well, Xander. So it's going to be a really exciting game, that one. Mm, yeah, I can't wait. Um, but it was always going to be Aberdeen, wasn't it? It wasn't going to be Rangers or Mother. It was always going to be the toughest draw possible for us. So, okay. It's another good, exciting game to look forward to semi final of the League Cup. Celtic ladies, John, let's, let's have a wee word on them because they're flying high as well in the Champions League qualifier, John. They played, they played Voskala last week, John, a 2 1 win on Sunday against Voskala in the, the qualifying round of the, the Champions League. So, we take a 1 0 lead into the game um, against Voskala uh, at the weekend, John, Friday, I think it is, 7 15 kickoff. It's going to be very tough. Nobody's saying it's going to be easy, but a 1 0 lead into that game. Can't ask for any better than that. Not well done, the women. Uh, and I've not seen any Celtic ladies games this season. I think I've seen just the one that was uh, Glasgow City. And they looked quite lethargic in that game. Normally they're flying against them, they're playing well, but uh, I've not seen a game since. But I listen, good luck to them. Uh, we wish them all the best as well. And I look forward to watching them in the Champions League. Yeah, I can't wait, John. It's, uh, it's, I'm not a great follower of the ladies team, obviously, but I do the occasional news report on them etc and we do mention them in the podcast quite a lot John but you know for the first time ever in the Champions League all they have to do is beat Voskala in the Champions League qualifier John and that's him officially there and amongst the big guns it's, it's something to look forward to isn't it? It certainly is right because when there's nothing on and you find out that one of them games is on they're definitely worth watching because they can be quite exciting games sometimes the, the way these games I quite like them yeah, so, and by the way, the game is on Thursday, not Friday, so apologies for that. A 7.15 kick-off on Thursday, so it's definitely one I'm going to be keeping an eye on. Uh, good luck to the ladies, as John says. All the best of luck and uh, put Celtic into the Champions League proper for the first time in the ladies' history. Right, John, the other wee game I wanted to mention was, I think I've already mentioned, the Hearts game, the Wallen League game on Friday. Another one I'm looking forward to is uh, Celtic B against Hearts. You know, because we've been looking for football to watch, haven't we? There's no football this week for us, midweek football. Uh, so we played against Falkirk in our next games on Saturday. So there's a full week with, with no football for us. So we're looking for wee snippets of games to watch. Uh, the ladies is one and the Hearts game on Friday uh, in the Lowlands League, John. Another one to look forward to. Aye, aye. aye there's a few things to watch. Of course, there's always championship games on the Fridays, but I watch any Scottish games that's on. So there's always something for me to watch. Of course, you've got Malmo against Rangers Thursday night. That'll be an interesting game, I think. Yeah, you've got that to, to watch as well. Yeah, I don't think I'll be watching it personally, but uh, we'll touch on that in Rivals Corner, John. But I, I'm, I'm not going to be watching that one. Although, you know, it's Malmo are a decent team, isn't they? Uh, let, before we get to that then, Champions League tickets for Borussia Dortmund, John. How do you look at this? This is quite interesting. £16 the charge for a Champions League ticket, £16. The ticket for the Bratislava game, John, was £50. So what a difference. Um, they certainly know how to uh, treat the fans over in Germany. Aye, aye. They're, they're quite rich clubs, though, Zandy. You've got to remember that as well. They can afford to maybe discount ticket prices now and again for Champions League games. It's not something teams in Scotland can afford to do, you know, but... Ah, it's a fantastic price, isn't it, for uh, Champions League entertainment. That's rolling back the years. What, 25 years ago? You were Maybe 30 years ago you were paying that for a ticket here. Yeah, John, it's... Um, well, you look at, you're talking about rich clubs. Down in England, it's £60, £70 pound for a Champions League ticket, John, and they're just as rich. So well done to Borussia Dortmund for doing that. I, thought, I think that's fantastic. £16 pound a ticket. 
Um, I wish I could be going over there myself and watching it. Um, so well done to them. And let's get, let's touch on the the teams that we play we play in the Champions League, John, because this makes very interesting reading. Let's let's run through the results over the weekend for every team we play in the Champions League. Atlanta two, Como. I know you want to have jokes about that, John. Como three. So Como beating Atlanta three two. That's a terrible result for Atlanta, especially at home. Now this one, John Stuttgart five, Borussia Dortmund one. What's happened there? They seem to have imploded a wee bit there, Dortmund. I have been watching the Celtic and got the fear. <laughs> Five one, John against Stuttgart. That's a terrible result for Dortmund. So the only concern for me about that is, you know, that's not going to happen twice, is it? So it's going to be even tougher for Celtic, I think, with that result. You know, but that's. Uh, I think. I think. I, did, I think Dortmund had a draw last week and then a five-one humbling against Stuttgart. So it's going to be a very interesting game next week into against Dortmund. But we'll we'll get to that eventually. Uh, so Pauli now Leipzig now. So enough in each draw for Leipzig there, John. No great result for them. Club Bruges two Ghent. That's with a T. Ghent four. So Club Bruges they're in turmoil. Um, makes a wee change, doesn't it, John? Normally we play these teams that are flying. So. Club Bruges 2, Ghent 4, uh, no Bayata there, of course. <laughs> so maybe that was why they got beat 4 2. Um, Dynamo Zagreb 1, Slavin or Slavin 4, John. So uh, another thumping for one of our teams in the Champions League. Dynamo Zagreb getting beat 4 1. Aye, that's all good news. Keep it coming. <laughs> um, it doesn't get any it, it doesn't get any better. It's, it's back to normal with the last two teams, John. Young Boys 4. Um, Winterthur 1, so 4 1 win for Young Boys, and that's the Villa 3, Wolves 1. So, apart from Young Boys and Villa, John, that's some really bad results for our teams in the Champions League. Aye, well, like I say, keep it coming. That's what we like to hear. Uh, just, I hope when it comes time to play Celtic, the results are just the same. I can only say that, especially Aston Villa, which I've always cited as it's going to be the hardest game out of this Champions League for us. So far, anyway, I think uh, Aston Villa, any English Premiership team is going to be a hard game, but uh, I can't wait for that one. Yeah, well, there's some brilliant games there. For, there really are some really good games in the Champions League for us this season. And, uh, and if these teams keep up the poor form, it can only bode well for Celtic. Although it doesn't normally affect the, the Champions League games, does it? So, all right, John, uh, let's let's quickly move on. Uh, by the way, just incidentally, the Borussia Dortmund game, is on a Tuesday next week. It's not the Wednesday, so it's a Tuesday game with an eight o'clock kickoff. Um, I John, it's, it's I, I mean, just looking at the results before we leave it. You know, normally we play the teams, didn't we? I, I said a couple of minutes ago we play these teams and they're flying in the Champions League, winning all their their home games, winning all their you know domestic games as well. John, I think um, I think this could help us. What do you think? It just depends on how they're playing when it gets around to playing Celtic. I mean, there's weeks and weeks to go before we play some of these teams, so they've got plenty of time to recover, Zander. I have, I um, But it's, it's, it's just strange to see. As I say, no, it's Barcelona and they've just beat, you know, Seville 7 nothing or something. Anyway, John, let's let's quickly move on to the Falkirk game because we've not had a say on this yet. Have we, the Falkirk game? Uh, we'll not do a full uh, post-match on this. We'll just quickly run through some, some of the things that happened to um, Obviously, there was eight changes in the game. The trusty started Ralston, Ballet, Stephen Welsh, Bernardo, Forrest, Parmar, Adam Ida all started who didn't start in the, the previous game against Bratislava. John. So, eight changes there. Um, Brendan certainly ran, run through the changes there, did he? Didn't he? Aye, there was a lot of changes. The only one I think I predicted was uh, what's his name? Trusty. Trusty, aye. Oh, we, we made the same kind of changes when we did the post-match. Not the yeah. post-match, the pre-match. Uh, when we did the pre-match, we kind of says, we mentioned the same changes that would happen apart from Trusty. Uh, but I wasn't expecting that. And that was wholesale changes. That was a Celtic B team apart from McGregor, Hitati and the goalkeeper, Schmeichel. Yeah, that's it, John. I, I was really surprised to see Wel Welsh there, John. Welsh is he's quickly running out of time. No offence against the boy, but I think he's quickly running out of time. I was surprised to see Welsh starting before Naroki. That was a bit of a shock for me. 
to be honest with you. I thought I would have seen either Scales or Carter Vickers in the squad, John, but both of them got rested as well. Hitati, um, you know, I don't know. I, I just I just thought it was a strange lineup to be honest with you. Then there was Forrest and Palmer, you know, it's a team that's never ever played together. Um, but uh, we got the result in the end, didn't we? Let's quickly run through the goals. Brilliant goal for McIver in the eleventh minute, John. What a what a strike for that boy. Goalkeeper had no chance. Puts them one nothing up. Uh, equaliser for Bernardo, an outstanding volley for Bernardo to make it one each. Then Yates scores, um, put them in the lead again right on half time. Another lovely wee goal header uh, by the goalkeeper. I don't think the goalkeeper had any chance for that either. Um, uh, but then anyway, we, then we make the subs, didn't we? Kuhn, etc. comes on. A couple of other subs, Taylor. Uh, yeah, we just bring a few changes. And it makes the difference. Didn't a big Adam Eder with a double in the 70th and the 72nd minute. Then um, Kuhn as well, he came on. He bagged a double as well, didn't he? First and the fourth minute. A um, couple of nice assists, John, by Kuhn for Adam Eder. And a nice assist from Engels for Kuhn as well, John. So, yeah. The three boys that came on certainly made a difference. Uh, Kuhn, Taylor and Engels. Aye, aye, they did make a difference. Uh, was there no four subs made? I can't remember. I think Celtic made four subs. But I can't remember now. It was so long ago. I've to, the game's totally out of my mind. But there is a lot of incidents in that game that I was unhappy with, with Michael Stewart. I can't remember the boy was at McKenna. He tackled uh, the Celtic player, Anthony Ralston. Is that sending off, John? Sending off? I sending off. Was Michael Stewart thought, oh, come on, that's not a sending off. His foot went a little bit astray there. Who's he trying to kid? They kicked him right in the groin. Yeah, John. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I had to laugh at the Falkirk manager's opinion on that as well. I have not, nothing to speak of there, it is. So that's your Falkirk manager's opinion on that. As you say, Stewart as well, you know. What, what game is it they're watching, you know? Uh, well, the guy, he got, he, he got sent off, so he got his deserved punishment, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, you've got to laugh at some of these reactions to these these decisions, John, you know, um, nothing to see here. I mean, uh, quite a poor tackle, if you're going to be honest, John, quite a reckless, you know, tackle on a Celtic player, uh, Anthony Ralston. Just glad he walked up and got away from it, John, to be honest with you, but um, I certainly deserve red, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, I 100%. It's a red card all day, that one. And there was also a tackle on, uh, I can't remember who it was, somebody went right through the back of a Celtic player. It should have been a red card. They got yellow carded for it, the boy, but to me that was a red card right through the back. Uh, I think the tackle was on Nicholas Kuhn. Right through the back of him. Um, yeah. Shocking tackle. Uh, to me, I'm up half my seat at that point. That's a, how's that no a red card? He's given him a yellow. We've seen the infringement and only deemed that a yellow card. It was a red or a and a dirty, dirty tackle for behind. Yeah, that's it, John. It's, uh, there was a few in the game like that. The you know, Falkirk did play well. Let's give them a bit of credit. They did play well. and you know, They gave us the best game at Celtic Park this season so far, to be honest with you. But uh, just say some of the, the tackling left a lot to be desired, didn't it? Um, uh, but a couple of nice goals to score. And... Uh, we had to make the changes to, uh, to get the result in the end, didn't we, John? So um, we got the result in the end, 5 2 1 for Celtic, John. We're going to run through uh, individual scores because we always like to do this. It's not a proper post match, but um, this will be interesting, John, because some of these boys that came in, some of these changes, you know, Parma, Forrest, Welsh, Valley, Ralston, Trusty, you know, uh, but to be fair, a eh, young. Alex Valley, he did set up the, the equaliser for Bernardo. It was a nice wee layoff header and a beautiful finish for Bernardo, John. But 1 to 10, 1 to 10 uh, individual player scorings, what are you thinking? Well, before they even get into that, we haven't mentioned the fact that both of the Falkirk goals should never have stood. Do you know yeah, what I mean? The, yeah, the wee drag backs, the wee pullbacks before the goals scored, that's right, John. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Well, uh, what, what did you think then, John? The first one especially, I thought there was, um, it, it, I think it's Alex Valiant, he gets pulled back, and then the second one is inside the box, he gets pulled back as well, and he's trying to clear the ball, and it's laid off to the Falkirk player who crosses it for the header, John. Yeah, I think there's two fouls there, there before, both Falkirk goals. Uh, well, the one that Valley's pulled back in the box, 
he's going out to close it down because he's headed the guy's headed the ball back out the box. And before the guy strikes it into the net, he's holding back Valley for getting out to close the guy down. The Valley wants to go out there and close that down. And this guy's just held and held him back. And then the ball's in the net and he lets him go. That's not a goal for me. That should have been a free kick and that goal should have been chopped off. Another goal was uh, before it was crossed into the box. There's an arm across his face. That's a free kick to Celtic. Uh, nothing given. So to me, it should have been 5 nothing. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to take it away from Falkirk because I thought they were an exceptional team that day. I thought they played really, really well. But personally speaking, I don't think their goal should have stood. Yeah, well, that's that, John. Because um, I was shouting at, at the moments as well. You know, that this is where we, we went into the, the preview of the Falkirk game, John. And I'm going to, this is, this is, I forgot to mention this, right? A couple of things on the preview, right? You and I both said, that we have to be very wary of Falkirk, right? Both of us said that, John. Uh, we did say it was going to be a, maybe a, a bit of a slog, you know, Falkirk, they're on fire, they're, they're on fire at the top of the championship. And, John, we were getting comments saying that we were talking nonsense. You know, the hardest game we've had this season at Celtic Park, the hardest game we've had, you know, even the Champions League game was easier. I know we made a lot of changes, right? We did say that in the preview as well. And that was the reason why it was going to be tough because we were going to make all these changes. But, you know, for for jokingly, I mean, I might add jokingly, calling us to come on and say that we're um, hum, hum zombies, John. We're hum zombies. So because we said it was going to be, uh, again, we have to be very wary of. What do you think of that? I don't know what to make of that at all. There's always somebody's got their own opinion when they listen to stuff. Uh... I really don't know what to make of that. I think the comment will still be there, so I'll read it out anyway. But uh, Brendan Rodgers himself, he, he says that's the best team Celtic's played at Celtic Park this season. Does that not say it all? Yeah, of course it does, John. It tells you, it tells you a, a story, doesn't it? It really does. It was very, very tough. And it was 65, 70 minutes before we started playing some decent football in that game. And we had to make uh, three or four changes, as you said, John, before that, that even happened. So... Uh, yeah, the other thing was, John, we said in, the, in the, the preview that we had to be very wary of Dallas and the VAR as well, John. That was another thing we said. And it came true yet again. Dallas, you no know, even look at these tackles on Alex Valley before the uh, Fal Falkirk scored both their goals, in fact. Um, I think he looked at one of them and he, 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 he let the goal stand. So uh, we did say we have to be wary of um, Dallas and the VAR, John, and, and that's exactly what happens. You know, they give us nothing. Like father, like son, the guy's just an idiot. Uh, anybody in their right mind should be checking both their goals. You can clearly see Valley getting pulled back, dragged right back so he can't get out to close the ball down. So I, I like father, like son, that's all I can say on that, Xander. But uh, I, like, overall, I thought Falkirk were. A fantastic team. They went there, played their game. I think they played really well. And I agree with Brendan Rogers, the best team I've seen at Celtic Park this season. And I don't know why uh, John McGlynn isn't he getting considered for a Premier League job, Sander. Yeah, well, it might be in the background, John. We don't know. This is obviously Lenny and Bruni getting linked with these jobs. That's just the bookies sort of talking about that isn't it? but McGlynn might be John we don't know he's, he's a decent manager McGlynn isn't he? he's got his team playing really well and he's obviously he was unbeaten last season um, in the first division and now he's unbeaten again in the championship sitting top of the league so he's definitely definitely a half decent manager and uh, Brendan's got a lot of respect for him as well John Aye he has aye. I think Brendan says that there's, I don't know if there's any truth truth in the rumour that he went into the changing room off Falkirk after the game and congratulated all the players and says told them that they were the best team that came to Celtic Park. So it, it, look, that's the biggest compliment Falkirk can get and John McGlynn because it's true. Although I think two of their goals, the two goals they scored shouldn't have stood. Apart from that, I thought they were excellent wee teams under. I thought, I thought I'm watching them and thinking they're better than any Premier League team I've seen this season. And, and I'm not lying, apart from Celtic, of course, but uh, aye, very, very good teams under. They should be in the Premier League playing like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they're decent, wouldn't they? I know it's 
I know I say that a few times, but Celtic full strength for the wipe to fall with them, I think. But, you know, uh, that was still a decent team that was out there, John, playing against Falkirk. And they definitely gave us a scare, didn't they? So, um, before we get to the 1-10 to 10 individual scoring, what about Parma, Welsh, John, players like that? Where does that leave them? You know, that they have to, we have to make changes. Um, to win this game, you know, no, no, just Palmer and Welsh, other players as well that were in the team, yeah, Ralston, Valley, Trusty, John. Where, where does it leave these sort of players? I know it's only one game, right? It's only one game. It's, but I'm worried about players like Welsh. Where does it, where does it leave Stephen Welsh? Well, I'm like you. I don't like to talk down on Celtic players, but I've said for a long time I don't think there's a place at Celtic for Stephen Welsh. Every time he plays, we're conceding goals left, right, and centre. So, if you ask me, still, I think the same way as I did last season, I just don't think there's a place at Celtic for Stephen Welsh. I think Celtic should be looking to get Stephen after books because he's no, he's no good enough to play for Celtic. Xander. Sorry, Stephen, if, any, if you're listening or any of your family are listening, you're a good wee player, but I just don't think you're the level that Celtic's looking for. I hate saying that about any player, Xander, but my eyes on the line. Every time he plays, we're conceding goals. Even yeah. though the goals shouldn't have stood, but Welsh is in the mix for the goals. There's, there's nothing getting cleared for the header. The guy that heads the ball into the net. Welsh is nowhere near him. Um, yeah, John, I know we need the Scottish contingent in there for the Champions League. Uh, Ralston, Welsh, you know, you need so many Scottish players. That's the only thing I can think of why he's, he's actually getting you know, a game, to be honest with you. you know, the, as I said, but Big Naraki on the bench as well there, John. He could have started with him. He's went with Welsh. Obviously, he sees something in Stephen Welsh, the manager, didn't he? He sees something there. Um, but I think Stephen has to brush up on his performances, to be honest with you. He's a solid player, Stephen Welsh. He's, very, he's fearless. He puts his face in front of everything. But there's far too much goes right over his head, literally. And we can see goals from that. So, uh, if he could tidy some parts of his game up, he would be a good defender. But I just don't think... He's uh, good enough to play for Celtic, Xander. I just don't. Yeah, John, and you're not the only one. There's thousands of Celtic fans think the same. I've read plenty of comments regarding Stephen. And I'm not picking on Stephen. If you can turn it around and get into the first team, then good luck to him, John. That's we don't, as you say, we don't want to see, you know, any Celtic players getting harshly treated. But we just want to see improvements on performances, don't we? Uh, right. Speaking of performances, John, one to ten individual scores. Uh, what were you thinking for the Falkirk game? Right, well, I'm going to give you an honest assessment here of the, the, the start in 11. Goalkeeper Casper Michael went in two goals, didn't get close to any of them. I don't know. Five. <laughs> it's tough, isn't it? It's I, was tough. Going to, I was going to say four, and it's, for some reason five came out. Uh, I'll give him a five. Uh, and the much spoken about Stephen Wells gets a three for me. Yeah. Uh, Trusty, another three. Now, I gave him a four. He was slightly better. He looked all right, actually. I gave him a five. Mm, yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't think he looked overly troubled, so I'll give him a five. Yeah. On the right hand side, Anthony Ralston gets a six. Mm-hmm. On the left hand side, Valley, I'll give him, I think, if it wasn't from getting pulled back, I think he would have defended them goals. I'll give him a six. Thought he yeah. had okay, okay, that boy. Yeah, I thought he was okay. Uh, he was getting filled with other park as well, Xander, and getting held back for goals. No, I did okay, I think. Welcome to Scotland, son. Um, <laughs> six for him. Centre of the park, Carl McGregor, five. Mm-hmm. Didn't do much to influence the game at all. Um, Hatati, four. Thought he was terrible, Xander. Yeah. Uh, Bernardo, six. Hope Bernardo was okay. Give him a six and a half, in fact. Thought he was okay. Mm-hmm. Um, up front, James Forrest, four. Didn't do much to influence the game yet again. Uh, Palmer, three. Thought he was really poor. Uh, and man up front, Adam Eder, seven and a half. Yeah, well, they've got to tell you everything you need to know, didn't they, John? To be honest with you, no. James Forrest, dug us at a hole last season, John, but he's He's, uh, he came in against Falkirk and, you know, as you say, he didn't do much. Obviously, he's an outstanding wee player. If he can't 
judge them on one game. But, you know, it's just individual scores for one game, John. That's all it is. It's no a scoring on a player overall. So just... Oh, no, of course not. I mean, the thing with James Forrest is that he, he performs okay when he's got all the good players around him. When I say good players, I mean the regular starters. Mm-hmm. Same with Adam Eder and all that. You've seen the difference in Adam Eder when the good players came on or the regular starters came on. Yeah. You've seen the difference in Callum McGregor and all that stuff. So, you know, when these players are put in a team with, you know, non-regular starters, they, they fail to show up, Sander. Yeah. Yeah, it was a, a tricky one, wasn't it? You know, the first 70 minutes, we were nowhere near it, John. You know, I know we got that equaliser through Bernardo, but apart from that, we weren't really in it, to be honest with you. Um, and it, we've got to take it into account as well, I suppose. It's European hangover. I know most of these players didn't play in, in the European game, but there is still a European hangover in there as well. So you've got that, and then you've got a game against Falkirk, who are stuffy and tricky. You've got to take all that into account. Bring on bring on the big guns, and uh, we put the game to bed. So it was sort of what we expected, wasn't it? They did say it was going to be tricky. We did say it was going to be stuffy, and that's exactly what happened. Aye, it was, aye. Uh, I'm not. I'm not saying any of these Celtic players that get low marks are bad. They just won a game five two. Should have been five 0 in my opinion. But the performance just wasn't there for a lot of the players. A lot of them just didn't show up. It's as simple as that. They didn't show up, and you only really seen the real Celtic when uh, the the regular first teamers came on Xander. Yeah, that's it. John. That's it. Um... Yeah, it was a funny one. It really was a funny one. I don't know. I don't know what to make it. I'll quickly run through my scores, John, right very quickly. Schmeichel, six. I'll give Ralston, six and a half. Frosty, six. Welsh, five. Alex Valley, six and a half. Callum McGregor, six. Uh, Bernardo, six and a half. It's Hatati, five. I'm going to give Adam Ida. Seven for his two goals. He took them really well. Um, James Forrest five, and who started on the left? That was Palmer Winter. I'll give him a four. So yeah, John, similar scores to you. It's uh, some players played well, some players didn't play too well. But the the end result was Celtic into the semi final, and that's all that matters. That's all that matters. I mean, my scores were a lot lower than yours, Xander. Couple, couple of them were similar, but I think my, my scores were a, ro- a lot lower. But I'm only gone by uh, what I was watching. I just didn't see a team that turned up until the main starters came on. Mm-hmm. But uh, who was your man of the match? Well, in fact, Nicholas Kuhn, I'm going to mark the subs that came on because they changed the game totally. Uh, Nicholas Kuhn, give him an eight. Mm-hmm. There, he, he just totally changed the game for me, Nicholas Kuhn. Yeah. Uh, I can't even remember though. Who was the other starters? Uh, uh, the subs, subs, subs that came on was Taylor, Engels, Kuhn, um, and I think uh, Big Naroki came on as well, John. Aye. I'm just going to mark him up quickly, Xander, the, the ones that came on. Nicholas Kuhn, I'm going to give him an eight and a half. I, th- yeah. I think he, he was outstanding when he came on. Two assists and two goals. Can he, can he ask for any more than that? Yeah. Uh, Arnie Engels, I thought was brilliant. Give him a seven. Uh, Greg Taylor, give him an eight as well. These th- they three totally turned the game around for me. Of course they did, John. Yeah, of course they did, John. Sorry. Um, uh, 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 just, it was a different game when they came on. It a totally different game. It was just the, the usual slick, sharp football, John. Uh, we, Nicholas Kuhn, you know, for Nicholas to win man of the match after only playing 20 minutes, that tells you absolutely everything you need to know. Greg Taylor, John, you know, that boy gets a tough time sometimes at Celtic. Uh, John, he's, I don't know where we'd be without Greg Taylor, just to be honest with you. He's an outstanding left back for Celtic. He does a brilliant job, stellar job for Celtic. He's getting better and better every game he plays as well, uh, young Greg Taylor. Uh, so I'll quickly run through my subs, John. Greg Taylor, eight. Nicholas Kuhn, nine. Arno Engels, eight. And Naroki, I didn't really see much of him because it was all Celtic, so I gave him a five. I don't remember him coming on, to be honest with you. But there's a lot of things I don't remember about the game. But I look, the subs totally changed the game. I, I'm 100% agree with you. High marks are deserved for all of them because when they came on, they made it look easy, basically. Uh, and if Celtic would have played with a full team from the start, I think that would have been 7 8 nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah, definitely, John. It goes without saying. Uh, I think Naraki came on for Welsh, by the way. 
Um, all right, John, that's it. Um, who's a man of the match again? Sorry, it was uh, Kuhn, wasn't it? Oh, Nicholas Kuhn for me, aye. Yeah, I think that's everybody's man of the match, and it? Mine as well. Uh, all right, that wraps up the game. Celtic through at the semi final to play Aberdeen in the 2nd of November. So that's, that's we've already spoken about that. That's going to be interesting. Let's get into the Rivals Corner, John, because we're going to start with Aberdeen in the Rivals Corner. Joint top in the league, John, into the semi final against Celtic. Going about their business very quietly, as I said earlier on, John. Um, they played Dundee at the weekend away from home. You know, a great chance for them to go above Celtic in the league, John. They're just flying high, Aberdeen, just now. I have been watching Aberdeen. They're a half decent team. Nicholas Coon, by the way, two goals and two assists Sunday. You can't have like that. 20 oh. minutes, 20 minutes he, he did that, you know. Thoroughly deserved mind the match for playing for 20 minutes. Unbelievable. Uh, I Aberdeen flying high. I've watched quite a few of their games. I still like Aberdeen. I like watching them. Uh, it's going to be a tough semi final, and I, I, they, they will, they will go to the top of the league because they play before us. So I, I can guarantee you they'll win. So there's no going to be a problem there. Yeah. So Jimmy Taylor's a manager, John. He's, uh, I've never heard of this guy before, Jimmy Taylor, but he's he's definitely doing a job for them. Isn't he? He's he's got them playing some nice football, getting good results. I think, I think the last result was a four nothing win. Um, obviously in the cup there, John, against uh, uh, I think it was the Minnows, wasn't it? One of the, the lower league teams. Um, but still, they, they've done a professional job. They won 4 nothing, John. Um, they're into the semi-final against Celtic. It's going to be a, a tough, tough game. It really is. Obviously, they play them in the league very soon as well. So it's going to be like a sort of a, a double-header, if you like, against Aberdeen. Um, so we just need to hope that Celtic can uh, um, sort of a lower their expectancy level, put them out the cup and beat them in the league, John. Uh, aye, of course. That's what we all hope for. It's going to be hard games though. Aberdeen, like you says, they are flying. They're going to be a tough team to beat. But they've not really played anybody of real quality yet. That's what you've got to remember as well. So when they come up against Celtic, it's always a different story. I think Celtic, Celtic field team, I think, should be far too strong for Aberdeen. They're slick, they're fast, they've got the fastest team in the league by a mile. Um, like Celtic's field team, are, they're just going to be too much for Aberdeen, I think, Xander. Oh, yeah, yeah, and especially with the first league game being at Celtic Park in 19th of October, we play Aberdeen, and then maybe about a week and a half later, we play them in the cup at Hamden. So, yeah, John, 19th of October, so it's one to look out for, isn't it? It really is. It's uh, and well done to Aberdeen, I might add, John, for you know, the. Uh, Staying with Celtic right up until just now, John, the joint top in the league. So well done to them. Um, but we need to take care of business against them. So all these um, congratulations have to go out the window, John, when we play them and just do a professional job against them at Celtic Park on the 19th. It will be a professional job. I think Celtic's going to be too much for any team in Scotland at Celtic Park, Aberdeen included. Like I say, they've not really played anybody a real quality yet. Um, but we'll wait and see. That's a long way away, Xander. But right now, all we can talk about is uh, Aberdeen, like you says, could go top of the league on Saturday because Celtic don't play it the Sunday, and that's the immediate facts. We can talk about that, and I think Aberdeen will go top. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right, John. Let's move on to our other rivals near the top of the league. That's Rangers and Pedro Mendes, ex Rangers player. Says Rangers will 100% win the league. Who is this guy, John? <laughs> Pedro Mendes thinks Rangers will 100% win the league this season, John. Sitting five points behind, third or fourth in the league. I think they're third now, actually. Uh, I don't know, just another cheerleader, I suppose. Oh, I remember Pedro Mendes, aye. What a player he was, eh? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm being sarcastic there, of I course. Know, I've made you don't even know who, you do know who he is. <laughs> I was being sarcastic. I have to get a clue who he is, but I, rem I remember the name. That's about it. Wee guy with dark hair, I think. But I look, I don't know what, what league he's watching. Maybe he's watching all the replays of when Rangers used to be Rangers, maybe watching something like that. I don't know. But look, there's no chance Rangers are going to win the league this season. No Celtic keep up their, their current form. And Aberdeen, you've got to take into account Aberdeen. They're not going to be any mugs this season. 
Rangers are going to have to fight them for second place this season. That's why I'm looking at this. The Rangers team I'm looking at are very, very poor. They're a very poor side. And uh, obviously, like he says, he's just a wee cheerleader, you know, he's you know, pie in the sky. The, the guy's allowed to dream, I suppose. Yeah, John, it's, um, and Rangers haven't played anybody apart from Celtic either. To be honest with you, you know, Ross County, St. Johnson, uh, I don't know, Dundee, all, all at home. You know, they've not played anybody. They've got Hibs at home at the weekend as well. Another guaranteed three points from because Hibs were doing nothing against them, weren't they? So that's another three points for them. Uh, but let's touch on the Malmo game, John, but there, there might be um, a, a more favourable result for us Celtic supporters, if you like. Malmo, 13 to 10. Uh, Rangers, 11 to 5. So 21 Rangers and evens Malmo. So the Bickies are making Malmo favourites. Malmo sitting top of the league, John, 10, 10 points clear. Top of the Swedish league, uh, they just came off of a, a 4 nothing win against uh, Hacken at the weekend. So, Malmo won for him. So, what can they hope for a, a good Malmo victory on Thursday night, John? Aye, that's what we're all ho- hoping for. Come on, the Malmo. Um, <laughs> it's going to be a tough game away from home. And Europe always is. No matter where you go in Europe, away from home, it's a tough game. Uh like, it just depends. Uh, I've, I haven't watched Malmo, obviously, but I've watched Rangers against Celtic. Uh, who else was it? I watched all their pre-season friendlies and I watched one of their league games. They're going to check the Champions League, didn't they? Uh, Rapid Vienna, I think it was. And they were dreadful in that as well. So, yeah, John, it's... Um, I just hope Malmo can, uh, you know, play the way they've been played all season, sitting 10 points clear at the top of the league and uh, put Rangers to bed. Aye. I don't think it was Rapid Vienna, mind you, but I can't, I can't remember who it was. It was a Ukrainian team uh, who were playing their games in Poland, and for the life of me, I can't remember who it was. can't remember who it was, John. Somebody liked Rapid Vienna anyway, but they're going to tell that was a bottom line. Um, but, John, we just hope that Malmo can, you know, bury them and put them back in their place. Aye, I, I had Sorry, I need to keep remembering I've got you on mute while you're talking. Uh, <laughs> Aye, I think Malmo will put them back in their place. Right now, I would take even just a draw or something there, but I, look, a win would be better for Malmo. But uh, it's going to be a hard game for Rangers. Uh, and the Rangers fans thinking it's going to be easy for them, are kidding themselves on, including Pedro Mendes. But aye, look, all the best to Malmo, that's all, that's all I can say. That's all, that's all I'm hoping for. I will watch that game. I'll watch that game with interest. See how it goes. Yeah, John, I'll, um, I'll be watching it with interest as well. Actually, I'm, I don't know. I'll maybe listen to it. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. But anyway, good luck to Malmo, as you say, John. That wraps up Rivals Corner um, for the day. Then we'll keep it was John, by the way. They won't put it away. Um, anybody that's interested. Um, all right, John's comments time then. Um, before you get into the comments, three quick mention on the competition. One more time. Correct score against St. Johnson on Saturday night. That's what we're looking for. The correct score and a player to score in the goal. <laughs> I'll say that again. A player to score in the game at any time. So any player for Celtic or St. Johnson and the correct score. That's what we're looking for, folks. Into the comments section. One guess each, everybody, to win the still game metal plaque, metal wall plaque. Great prize there, John. Um, yeah, one guess each and good luck to everybody in the competition. Good luck, everybody. Hi. Yeah. Uh... I was just going to comment on Rivals Corner about their crowd, which was about looked about twenty five thousand or something, thirty thousand, something like that. Was that Aye, the bro- game at the weekend, right, John? I don't know that, right? Um, well, there you go. Was all the stands open? Was there some of the stands closed? I, I don't know. I don't know anything about it, John. Uh, I don't know. I just seen pictures and uh, uh, no. In fact, I watched the start of the game. I think I watched about fifteen minutes. Then I turned it off. Uh, but I just but lots of spaces in the crowd. One of their stands shut, obviously. That stands no finished yet. And apparently, that uh, new stand I've got is blocking the view for the players in the lower deck. You know the the new right. the new extension that they got put in Ibrox. Right. Apparently, it's blocking the view uh, from the. The top to the lower deck, it's a uh, restricted viewing now, if you're standing at the back of the bottom deck. There you go. 
uh, workmanship of the highest quality. That's what they like to see, Ibrox. <laughs> uh, John, and speaking of crowds, by the way, well done to the Celtic supporters that turned up on Sunday against Falkirk. I think we said 45,000. I think it would be a bit more than 45,000 at the game, but the looks of things, John, it looked like about 50,000 at the game. So well done to all the Celtic fans that turned up on Sunday. Aye, I thought it was a half decent crowd. It looked, it looked to be around the 50,000 mark. I agree with you. It looked about 50,000 there, something like that. No sure. It's hard to tell in a big stadium like Celtic Park, you know, 60, nearly 61,000 capacity. It's uh, it's hard to judge a crowd in a big stadium like that. But I, look, to me, it looked about 50,000. Yeah, well, well done. Well done, every everybody that turned up to Celtic Park on Sunday. Probably, probably turn out, John, you know, for a game that was on the telly for a start. And on a Sunday afternoon, you know, people have you know, other things to do, etc. But everybody turned up and it was a brilliant uh, turnout. So well done, every man, woman and child. Fantastic. Let's go on with the comments, Sander. Uh, Casby was first up. Casby 78 says, hi, yeah. Sander. Franco here, mate. 4-0 and Maida to score. 4-0. Uh, wasn't far away. Five, well, it was far away. <laughs> I don't think they got near it, John. I think there was. I don't know if it's in the comments. The four two that was that I saw. Somebody, somebody said four two. Uh, might have been over on Facebook. I'm not sure, but uh, one or two four twos, John. Uh, so that was the closest we got. So I'm lucky and keep entering the competitions, Franco. Aye, uh, thanks for that, Franco. Next up was you, Deef. He says four 0 as well. I said four 0 as well, actually. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, um, we got the four five, didn't we? Four five goals. Um, well, five it was. <laughs> But uh, uh -huh. it, was a, it was a two. The one it was a two that everybody done. So there was not one correct entry to competition. Um, just keep entering, folks, and good luck. The two that should never have stood. Um, anyway, McGregor. He, he says four 0 and McGregor to score. Uh, looks like a great prize, Sander and John Hale Hale. Aye, uh, it does look like a good prize. I've not seen it yet, but aye, uh, they look like good prizes. Yeah, it's a good prize, John. Um, it's, uh, I've made that a wee bit tougher because uh, the correct score was too easy, wasn't it? You know, um, especially at Celtic Park, you know, you're going to win three, three or four, nothing. You know, most people are getting it right. You know, you know the last time um, we had a correct entry, there was 33 correct entries, John. So I just thought I'd maybe may try and make it a wee bit tougher by adding uh, an any time goal scorer for any team, John. Just, just, to, just to make it slightly tougher, you know. Aye, oh there you go then. I got it right. I got the the correct scorer right. I'd but say either would score. Mm -hmm. That's it. But I didn't. But I didn't get the score right. No, so that's tougher. That's tougher, John. Aye. Anyway, thanks for that. Uh, Joe Curran says four 0 as well. Angles and scales to score. Angles and scales both didn't start, didn't they? So it was, it was it was tough that way as well, wasn't it, John? And nobody knew what the start lineup was going to be. We didn't know if it was going to be wholesale changes or one or two. It ended up it was wholesale, so that made the competition even tougher. Aye, uh, I'm just uh, three guys have predicted four 0 in a row here, Sander. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So and if, you, if you add me to that, that's four guys. Anyway, thanks for that, yeah. Joe Curran. Good to see you here, mate. Don't think I've seen you here before. Thanks, Joe. Cheers, pal. Uh, next up was Teeling. Teeling says, I don't know if his full name is Teeling Triple Six O, or that's just like the, the tag on the end of your username. I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah. But we'll call him Teeling. Teeling Triple Six O. <laughs> yep. He says, he says uh, he or she says, left back is our position that needs upgrading and Liam Scales can play his way to our advantage. I don't think left back is the position that needs upgrading. I think Greg Taylor does a great job there. All right, I would like to see a better left back there, but I think, I think we Greg does a half decent job there. To be honest with you, yeah, would you miss him when he's not there? Uh, and let's touch on Greg Taylor for a minute. Thanks, Taylor, for uh, bringing us up because we need him signing that new contract, John. We need him to sign a four or five year contract because he has a quality left back, John. He has got quality. He's you know, he's unfazed in the Champions League. He's a serial winner. He's won trophy after trophy. Get him signed up, John. Let's get this contract signed up uh, sooner rather than later. Aye, aye. I like Greg Taylor. I don't know what he's done with his hair. He looks like one of the Beatles or something like that now with the beard and the hair. <laughs> he does, aye. Uh, uh, he's trying try to change his look, isn't he? Um, maybe he's trying to look a wee bit older because he's got the youthful looks, young Greg, isn't he? So, 
Uh, no, get him signed up, board. Get him signed up, pronto. That's all I can say. Aye, no, I, I like Greg Taylor. I've got no problem with Greg Taylor playing at left back. I think he's half decent. We could all use better players at every club. We'd all want, you know, Messi playing for us or whatever. But we've got what we've got, and they do a half decent job for what they need to do, and that's win titles under. Yeah, that's all you can ask, John, isn't it? Uh, and he's, I know it was only Bratislava, but he played a blinder against them as well. So, yeah, I'm quite happy, John. Uh, if we get better quality in, we get better quality in. But as it stands, I'm quite happy. Me as well. I, I think that new hairdo and beards helped me, Greg, become a better player. Uh, that's it. Uh, anyway, thanks for that, Taylor. And next up was Paul McEwen. Paul McEwen says 5 0 to Celtic. Thanks for that, Paul. Yeah, you said, John, it should have been 5 0. So Paul was quite close. The two goals should have stood. Definitely, at least one should have been chopped off for the drag back, John. A serious drag back and preventing the, prevent the Celtic player, Valley, from clearing the ball. And, you know, it's so blatant. And uh, thank you. Dallas for that on the VAR. Appreciate that, Dallas. Brilliant job yet again. And another free pint for you at the Loudon. Um all week. Um, another free pint. Well done. Uh -huh. Like father, like son. Yeah. Uh Peter Hendry says, nice one, boys. Thanks for that, Peter. Yeah, Peter. Um uh, thanks for the comment, pal. Appreciate that. Keep the comments coming in, Peter. Cheers, buddy. Thanks, pal. Uh, Roseanne says. I think I put my reply in the wrong place, guys. She thought 5 0 and Kyogo to score. Unlucky, Roseanne. Yeah, we Kyogo. I just don't know if I had much I mentioned it, you know. Uh, <laughs> I've certainly missed the Kyogo, didn't we? He's, uh, but he got a rest, so he'll be fre fresh and fit and ready for the game against St Johnston. Uh, 5 0 was unlucky, Roseanne, by the way. Uh, you got the, the Celtic score right anyway, half right. So, yeah, we Kyogo, he'll be fit and fresh, John. Same as Scales, same as Carter Vickers and anybody else that didn't play. Aye, exactly. But I, I, don't, I don't think Brendan had to rest the team. Nobody's, you know, there's no game this week. He could have played the full team. It's a good point, John, because you look at, if you look at the other side of the, the, the city, Rangers played a full-strength team against Lowly Dundee, didn't they? So, you know, and they've got a game in midweek in Europe. They've still played a full team. John against Dundee, so you just say we had no game in midweek, we could easily have played a full, full team, that's a good point John Aye uh, Well But we didn't like, <laughs> No, no uh, Let's be kind of going about that no. The Rangers beating Dundee although they've got a a game in Europe in midweek that says it all about them, doesn't it because um, basically if they were to field an inferior squad, Dundee would have probably have flattened them. Um, yeah, just quickly touching on that, John, I don't want to mention him too much, I've already done Rivals Corner with Aberdeen and Rangers, but apparently they were struggling at one nothing right until they got their usual Tav Pen, John, so, yeah, the Tav Pen returns at Ibrox, John, now, there you go, Tav Pen returns. There you go then, they'll be fighting out to see who's the best penalty taker with uh, Arnie Engels. Yeah, Engels, 100% uh, record so far, so long may that continue. Aye, anyway, who cares about them? Paul McCune says, hail, hail, the Celtic and the Celtic women are well, hail, hail. Thanks for that, Paul. Rosemary up next, and she says, all is good. That is all Rosemary. Is, yeah, all is good. And by the way, uh, the Celtic women are well, and we're looking for a result on Thursday night, so good luck to the Celtic ladies on Thursday night. Cheers for the comment, Paul. Aye, thanks for that, Paul. Uh, James Doran says, plenty of empty seats at Ibrox tonight. There was plenty of empty seats, James. Yeah, I've never seen it, John, but if you're saying there's, what, 25,000, that's quite bad, isn't it? You know, it's, uh, yeah, they're in disarray over there, John. As you say, we don't want to talk about them. We've already done Rivals Corner, which involves every club that's uh, fighting for us for the league title. Um, uh, so we've already touched on that. So long may their woes continue, that's all I can say. Aye, well the reason they played a full strength team against Dundee is because that's their only realistic chance of winning a trophy, to be honest with you, that's their only realistic chance of winning a trophy, which they won't win, Celtic will win it, but realistically, yeah, right, realistically, they, that's their only chance of winning a trophy, uh, so somebody tell that to Pedro Mendes. <laughs> you said earlier you'd rather go to Rangers, do you know something, you're bang on again because people think I'm agreeing with you too much tonight, but... You're bang on again because it would have been an easier game. Beating Rangers at Hampton, not a problem. 
that we've got Aberdeen. We don't know what we're up against with Aberdeen. We've not played them yet, so uh, we'll find out soon enough, I suppose. But I think you're right. I think I would have preferred to play Rangers in the semi-final. Absolutely, I would as well, Sander. Kevin McKenna was up next and says 4-1, and you go to score. Thanks for that, yeah, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. We would never sell a club, says, I think Ron- Rogers should make three or four changes today, particularly Maeda, who has been running on fumes and deserves a rest. Well, you got your wish, we would never sell a club. He made about eight changes. Yeah, he did. And uh, Johnson got a, a rest as well, didn't he? Alistair, well deserved break for Alistair. Uh, Maeda, yeah, yeah, brilliant. And Kyogo. Um, Engels, you know, the list goes on and on. John was a, it's more or less a full squad rested, wasn't it? So it can only bode well for for Celtic, for us. Aye, well, this is it, aye. Um, but I, I think, it, I don't know. We got the job done, that's all I can say. I would rather he didn't make all the changes, but uh, maybe three or four would have been good enough. But no, look, job done, done and dusted. Sander, end of. Yeah, end of, yeah. Uh, Mad About Football says 3 now and McGregor to score. Yeah, yeah. I think my initial guess was 3 nothing, but I was nowhere near it. Especially if Falkirk's gone two goals early, so uh, um, well, one goal early and one at half time. Went to, yeah, I was nowhere near it, three nothing, nowhere near. In fact, we're not doing too well in the correct score at all, are we, John? I think it's still nothing each. No, you've got one, I've got nothing. All right, is it one, is it? Right, okay. Uh, still no great, is it? Well, it's only five games being played, so it's not bad. No. Five or six. Well, if you take the Champions League game into account as well, but seven games have been played, I think, and you've got one, right? I've got nothing, but. Uh, uh, there you go. Never mind. It's just a bit of fun. Anyway, next up, next was Fuji Stoner. And he says, I've got 5 0. Celtic on. Hail, hail. Thanks for that, Fuji Stoner. 5 0. Thanks for your guest, pal. And enter this week's competition for St. Johnson game as well, pal. Just uh, any scorer and a correct score. Good luck. Aye, thanks for that, buddy. Next up was Lisbon Girl. Uh, uh, she's wrote a wee podium. So I'm yeah. going to read that. I'm going to read that out as best I can because I'm not exactly good at reading poems. Out. Right, ready? Yeah, go for it. Lisbon girl says roses are green, violets are white. Sexy football is back. It's a beautiful sight. Glasgow Celtic, they're our team. Adam Meader's two goals, a Celtic fan's dream. Scottish champions once again. The fans are singing. It's a beautiful terrain. Lisbon girl and the viewers on the Celtic Forever pod. We follow Celtic. It's a beautiful squad. <laughs> well done, John. And well done, Lisbon girl. I read that. That's absolutely fantastic, Lisbon girl. Beautiful. Uh, Round the applause for that. Yes, I'm going to add that. Uh, that be effect, John. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lisbon girl, outstanding. Well done, Hen. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, Lisbon girl was also asking when. The, the next podcast was on so she's a, an avid follower of the podcast John so welcome to Lisbon girl thank you very much and what a beautiful wee poem that was John and well done to you buddy reading that out absolutely flawless buddy Hi, uh, no she made it easy to read it out she's got it all properly sectioned off you know all the paragraphs and all that she's did a fantastic job it's a cracking wee poem uh, I look, I'm not a lover of poems but when it comes to Celtic I'm a lover of all things Celtic and that was out of this world, Lisbon Girl. Uh, I can only say, fantastic. Well done. Uh, we're all proud of you here. And thanks a million for your, your wee poem. We'll keep that one. Maybe read it out in another podcast sometime. Maybe I'll make a wee definitely. song about it. Yeah, definitely, John. Um, you're, the, you're the one, you're the artist, John. You could make a wee poem song with that one. So, uh, yeah, well done. Well done, Lisbon Girl. I appreciate that so much. Um, um, uh, yeah, we'll read it again, John, definitely. Um, we'll read it out maybe every week because I love it. I absolutely love it. <laughs> ah, that's brilliant, Lisbon Girl. Thanks very much. I'll see if I can put a wee tune to that for you uh, and we'll put it on the podcast one day. If I can be bothered doing music because I don't do much music these days, but uh, uh, we'll see we'll see how it goes. But I really enjoyed it, Lisbon Girl. Uh, we'll spend yeah. a bit of, bit of time talking about it because you've obviously spent a wee bit of time thinking about it. Let us know in the comments what you think of Lisbon Girl's poem. I'll read it out at the end before we finish again, just to uh, let everybody hear it. Anyway, yeah. thanks for that, Lisbon Girl. That's, That's very perfect. much appreciated. It was perfect. brilliant. Perfect, perfect. Brilliant. Thank you. Anyway, moving swiftly on, we would never sell a club, says 4 0. We need it to score. Mm-hmm. Another 4 0, German, is that? That's been a few in the comments already. 
Ah, uh, quite a lot, including my guess. So thanks yeah. for that. We would never sell our club and no. uh, un- unlock it. Unlock it, Paul. Yeah. Just what I mentioned, uh, we would never sell our club. Actually, been with us from the start. She's brilliant as well, Xander. She's been here from the start. Her, Roseanne, James Doran, our regulars. Uh, thanks very much to every single one of the regulars. All brilliant. Good contributors. Yeah, yeah they contribute plenty to the channel, don't they, John? They give us plenty to talk about as well, you know, with our views and opinions. And the new ones as well, John, all the new commenters as well, they, they leave their comments and it's very much appreciated, every one of them. Oh, aye. Absolutely, aye. Um, I'm just thinking Lisbon Girls, we poem. I did a cover version of Feels Ath and Rye, if you remember, Sander, just acoustic guitar. Yeah. Could maybe put the awards to it. Um, that'd be nice. You... Yeah, that'd be nice. That'd be that'd be lovely. Yeah, that would be up for that. Uh, I don't think Lisbon Girls heard my verse. And I feel Zathan right. You can maybe put it on when I'm reading out the poem at the end <laughs> underneath yeah. it. Yeah, that's what I'll do, John. That's exactly what I'll do. I'll add it. You know, I'll turn it down obviously so we can hear the poem. And I'll add that to the the words. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. And let us know in the comments what you think about it. Um, that'll be coming up in five minutes, folks. Right. Anyway, I'm going to leave the best comment to last. No, the best, but the one that annoyed you. Uh, so the final comment goes to Lisbon Girl. She just says, Hail, hail, troops. When's the next podcast? Well, the next podcast will be uh, probably Sunday or Monday, Zander, after this one. Yeah, after this one, it'll be uh, the preview. So it'll be Friday night, John. Friday night preview podcast. And um, that's after today's podcast, obviously. Oh, aye, I forgot about the, the preview. We haven't done the St. Johnson preview yet, Lisbon Girl. So, yeah. uh, aye, it'll be Friday night. Yeah, Friday night, Lisbon Girl. Um, just turn on your notification bell, pal, and you'll get a notification when that's up and running. Right, thanks for that, Lisbon Girl. And I'm going, this is the comment that, that enraged you a wee bit, Xander. <laughs> <laughs> aye, annoyed me. Certainly did. Yeah, go for it, John. Oh, Stephen McAnally is the is the name. Yeah. And Stephen says, a tough game? You're talking like a gun zombie. I don't, I don't know what a gun zombie is. I take it it's meant to be the H instead of the G. Yeah, exactly. Uh, a tough game? You're talking like a gun zombie. Uh, he says, Celtic to hump them 4-5-0 easy. Forest to score and scales again guaranteed. Hail, hail. Yeah, it's, you know, the boy's entitled to his opinion, right? It's, uh, he thought it was going to be easy. A lot of people did think it was going to be easy. Uh, but we weren't uh, part of that group, John. We thought it was going to be stuffy, tricky, et cetera, et cetera. It was very stuffy, very tricky, very tough as well, I might add. Uh, Falkirk played a brilliant game of football um, and we overcame it. And in the end, we 20, 15 minutes to go. Yeah, but don't go calling us, you know, gun zombies because it's far from the truth whether you're joking or no um we, we just we tell we tell it like it is uh Falkirk game we thought it was going to be tricky if it was going to be Ross County home we would say it's going to be easy we just tell what we are thinking at that time John I say uh, look everybody's entitled to their opinion my opinion and your opinion was based on multiple changes and Falkirk being a form team. So it was a tough game. But I'm going to read these other reply out, which uh, didn't buy much. There was three goals in it. A whole new Celtic backline. Back line. He says, I'll take 5-2. Very comfortable in the second half. We came alive after 70 minutes. Playing with the boys. It's Brendan's mate. He'll let them think for too long. It's tactic. Uh, mm-hmm. Brendan's... I don't know what he means there. Brendan's used for years. I don't know what you mean by that. No, no, he's, no, he's saying there, John, he's Brendan's pal and he's doing them a favour to make them think, think that they're a good team. But that's nonsense because Falkirk, that's disrespectful actually because Falkirk are a brilliant football team. They're flying high in the championship. You know, they're beating every team that's put in front of them. They just put out Hearts. They just put out Dungeon United. They had a great chance of putting out Celtic with Celtic reserves. And it had to take Celtic making various changes late in the second half to overturn that game. So, no, no, I disagree with that, John. I don't think he was, Brendan was doing his pal any favours at all. Brendan was desperate to win that game. Aye, of course he was, aye. Uh, I don't think there's any favours done uh, at all with Brendan. 
like it was wholesale changes, which we kind of predicted there would be a lot of changes, and that's why we based it on it being a tough game. Mm-hmm. And it was a tough game. And look, there was no favours when Falkirk, clear, Falkirk players are booting Celtic players off the park, kicking Anthony Ralston in the groin. Uh, what's his name? The right winger for Celtic, I forgot his name, who's German guy? Nicholas Kuhn. Kuhn, yeah. Getting hacked from behind, right and ankle, dirty tackle from behind, dragging Celtic players back for goals uh, that shouldn't have stood. It was a tough afternoon for Celtic, make no mistake. Anybody that thinks that was an easy afternoon for Celtic, watch the game again. That was not an easy, comfortable game for Celtic. And you say it's very comfortable in the second half, we came alive after 70. Well, that's because we brought on quality players. It became comfortable in the second half. Yeah, but it's it, like he says, Stephen, it wasn't comfortable until 70 minutes into the game and that's when the quality players came on. That made it look a wee bit easier for Celtic. So, uh, I, I agree with you in some points and totally disagree with you. I, I certainly disagree when you say we're talking like gun zombies. I've got to keep it clean on this podcast. But uh, don't go saying stuff like that because uh, you're far, far, far from the truth, Sonny. Yeah, yeah, John, we'll leave it there. That's uh, we don't want to end it on a negative note. Um, it's, it's just having a laugh, but it just wasn't very funny. You can't say that. You can't call Celtic podcasters uh, the sort of things, even in jest. Um, uh, lesbian girl, John, let's get back to lesbian girl. Let's end it on a high. Um, let's get that comment. Let's get that. Uh, by the way, thank everybody for your comments. That's appreciated. Um, uh, keep them coming in. Uh, Lesbian Girls, uh, we poem, John. Are you ready for it? Absolutely, I'm ready for it. Here it goes. Yeah. Lesbian Girl, one more time. Here's your wee poem. Roses are green, violets are white, sexy football is back. It's a beautiful sight. Glasgow Celtic, they're our team. Adam Eder's two goals, a Celtic fan's dream. Scottish champions once again. The fans are singing. It's a beautiful terrain. Lisbon Girl and the viewers on the Celtic River Pod, we follow Celtic. It's a beautiful squad. Beautiful. Outstanding. Well done. Um, John, catch you on the preview for St. Johnson on Friday. Hail, hail, buddy. Hail, hail, Zander. I'll speak to you soon, mate. Take it easy. Cheers, Bob.